It was just about the, uh, the libel tax. It was dreadful for my children. I got death threats. <laughs> They're death threats for sighting to my health problems, not the energy. Can you get in? <laughs> People called me a whore and said they wanted to behead me and put my head on a stack. I don't use an alias. I live in Rygate, I walk down my house street, it's not hard to find me if you want. But the people who all get me all the abuse are cowards, they need it anonymously. So that's, I don't use an alias, says Sally Morgan, whose real name is Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, you've got that one? And then I've got that one, yeah, what you've won, this is actually, it's not a pretty empty. Uh, we've actually won one of Sally's love letters. <laughs> this, uh, <laughs> And uh, she got this thing called Psychic War, which is a, a, a miserable fish bowl. And uh, just, just uh, before we do this, this is what Ashley says on that. Sally's love letters. Ask Sally about a loved one who has passed away and she may pick this card out of her Psychic War during the evening and come to you with a special message. Your name, try to keep your question or message, uh, or message brief, about 30 words will be fine. <laughs> That was about, funny enough, the message that comes from the spirits. It's like a sort of ghost mail service. Brilliant. <laughs> cool. Um, next question we're going to whisper is, which TV psychic was, was listed, I think it's been removed now, but used to be listed on Company's House website as the company's secretary for a company called Crack Stuffers? <laughs> I'm not making this up. Now, if, if you... Uh, sorry, John? It wasn't Derek Cora, but good guess. <coughs> Derek Brown. He <laughs> <laughs> got my conference. <laughs> John Edwards? No, it wasn't John Edwards. Colin Fry. It was Colin Fry. Crack stuffers is actually slightly worse than it sounds. <laughs> uh, if only if you've got a strong stomach and only if you're over 18, you might look at crackstuffers.com. This is what he was listed as as the company secretary, and it is the actual coin fry, not just going to what was. And what they make is oversized, they specialise in oversized blue silicon able sex toys. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's it. And, uh, so that's, uh, there's your price for that, that's the little silicon uh, mini coin balance hand. Is due back in court at the beginning of June for failing to comply with a breath test or provide There it goes, I don't know if you can. To refuse to provide a specimen after he crashed his car. Uh, you know, that's the other Derek Corey, he's the one with a 2,000 year old uh, Egyptian uh, spirit guy called Sam, who points out that he also seems to have a scouse accident. <laughs> and I wanted to one time, he was actually possessed by spirits. He, and he's still refusing to provide the evidence of it. It's quite so <laughs> um, and uh, so, you know, there's a bit of a double prize. You can have the lucky pants as well. <laughs> really enjoying the work there, aren't you? <laughs> finally, which TV sidekick, you just could guess what I'm going to have to say. Devin Brown again. <laughs> It's almost like I mean, that the site can heckle by him or something. Right? Uh, so, so that was not yet. Yeah, uh, which TV site, formerly a professional cabaret magician, was recently in the news because they were asked by a senior figure in Malaysia to help track flight NH370 due to their expertise in yeah. the viewing? Yeah. 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 It was our friend Yuri Geller. Oh, I must have said sorry. sorry. Oh, they're arguing. Right, um, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll tear the two shows off. That's the, uh, that's the uh, alien um, uh, insemination t shirt there for you. So, um, I think there's something more such as this. There we go. Cool. So, uh, yes, Brie Geller. Brie Geller, Brie Geller, Brie Geller, Brie Geller, Brie Geller, So, um, yes, Brie Geller said on the radio that he was asked by a senior figure, which is made, he made a change to a substantial figure uh, in Malaysia. 
always say it's the one I'm a fan of. Um, <laughs> uh, in relation to how the track is for the race, we said to him, he did not play for us about the hour, and yet he went on to ask his Facebook and Twitter followers for their suggestions about what happened to him. <laughs> And he actually said, my gut feeling tells me, this is a week after he went missing, my gut feeling tells me that someone either broke into the cockpit and forced the pilot to take that route, someone who had the knowledge of how the instruments work, very good knowledge on that aircraft, but my even stronger intuitive feeling tells me it was something to do with the pilot. <laughs> so if we just whittle that down, he reckons that a plane changing course and going missing is either something to do with the pilot, or someone else. <laughs> and he actually goes on to say then, um, that's all I can say, I have more information but I cannot reveal it. Uh, be careful because it's a sensitive issue. Yes it is, it's two of your people's families that you play with there, you tosser. <laughs> because that's factual. <laughs> um, well, actually, there's, there's another prize for the other person said. That's one of the special uh, teaspoons, uh, which can magically bend with this scientific, uh, scientific principle called pressure. <laughs> okay, let's crack on. Ladies and gentlemen, our next talk is, um, yeah, is Mark Edwards, and he's talked about psychic boost, using the worst skepticism to fight psychic fraud. He's come all the way up from uh, the States to be with us, so give a big warm welcome. Mark Edwards. <laughs>
by the way, the people who were up on the screen earlier, these are people who were my teachers, who I learned from. I learned the skills of mentalism. And during those formative years, I learned the techniques of mentalism. So when I was in my early 20s working at the Magic Castle in LA, I would see these, these so-called mind readers and psychics, and they were saying they were real, and I knew they were doing tricks, tricks that I was aware of. So that combined with sitting and listening to so many people talk about skepticism, I decided, uh, Susan and I got together and we said, we want to do things, okay? So we are doers, and I'm sure if you listen to Susan talk or you're involved with her, you know she is a doer. She doesn't sit around wasting her time. She goes out and she gets things done. So the, the movement that we're trying to build is people who really want to get involved. They don't want to just sit around and bemoan the situation. They're sick and they're fed up. They're fed up. I am, okay? I do everything I can at least once a day, and this is like anything else, once you start doing it, it starts doing it for you, okay? Once a day, I put my mind towards taking down psychic fraud. That's my thing. You, you may not care that much about it, but it could be anything. You have your passion and you say, this is what really pisses me off. I am sick of it. So what do you do? When you are sick of something, okay? When you, uh, when you go to your refrigerator and your refrigerator starts to stink, what do you do? You take out the garbage, okay? When it starts to smell, you don't sit there and just wait for it to get worse. You take out the garbage. So Susan and I, are involved with, we're going to start a, uh, a series of lectures. We're going to start in the States. They're going to be skeptical activism. That means getting up your ass and doing something. The take out the garbage tour. Okay? And the garbage is out there. It's littering every television, every, every learning channel, history channel. It's not about learning or history anymore. It's about ratings. And I know, because I've done these television shows. The last one I was going to do was the National Geographic, okay? They came to me and they said, we want you to talk about psychics. I said, okay, I'd love to. That'd be great. Then they said, here's the script. Here are the things we want you to say. I said, wait a minute. You want me to say it? And they said, yeah, we have this one line here. You may have a problem with it, but this is what we want you to say. We want you to say that in some cases, a psychic reading might actually help. And I said, no. I said, maybe just talking to a bartender might help. <laughs> you know? Or maybe talking to your Aunt Tilly. Or maybe in very rare cases, if you're at a Halloween party and there's a person dressed up as a psychic who's giving fun readings for the fun of it and is not going to try and get a hook in you and carry you for the rest of the rest of your life and rob you. Yeah, it's okay to get, you know, impressions from other people. That's what's wrong with us, is we don't talk to each other like we should. That's what we, everybody wants someone to talk to. Okay, so I said, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. And they said, well, we'll change it around. How about this wording? And I said, no. I said, and then I started to tell them, you know, encouraging this type of thinking is exactly what I'm against. You need to be telling people the harm that is going on here. Don't, don't be encouraging people to take it lightly like this. So then they sent a final draft of the script, and I just said, this is what I want to say. And I said, basically what I'm telling you. Then I got an email, oh, we've decided to go in another direction. Okay? So I, I let that one go. But it's like, it's, so, it's such bullshit, you know, and they, they don't want to pay you anything. Oh, this is like a new show, uh, you know, we can't really, we can't pay people because that would be, that would be not right. I'm like, well, if you're interviewing me right now, you're getting paid for that, aren't you? Oh, well, yeah. Uh, you know, so I mean, I, I just, the, the whole idea of being used that way really pissed me off. So it's kind of like, that's it, I'm not doing any more television unless I'm allowed to say what I want and I have some editorial privilege. Because I've been burned, okay? I've been on television where I've made agreements, verbal agreements, which in Hollywood is not worth the, the paper it's written on, you know? I mean, you, you, you don't know how they're going to edit you. So, so 
So now I need to get out on the streets again, which is what we do. Okay? So Susan and I are involved with that, and we, you know, we're fed up. I'm fed up with sitting in a room and listening. You know, aren't you? I mean, really, you're here because you want to do something. So you don't have to get out on the street like me. And I'm going to show you an example of what we did with Sylvia Brown. She's gone. She won't be doing any more tours. So, you know, but it's like whack-a-mole. You know, you get one or two more pop up. We are in, I believe we are in the golden age of the con. Okay? You think the days of spiritualism were bad? Huh. Take a look around. Take a look around. Uh, I mean, I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but guess what? You know, it's a big frickin' shell game. Look at the banking industry, or in the United States anyway. The NSA, the banking, the duh, the duh, the duh. It's all a shell game, okay? And it is the biggest con ever. So I'm here to tell you to start at the grassroots, okay? You gotta pick your battles. You're not gonna be able to take down uh, a, a government official, and maybe there's no need to, but there are some real slime, slime bags we've been talking about, them, and I'm not gonna talk about them because I know about the libel laws here, but you know who they are, you know what they're doing. By now, if you're here, you know what cold reading is. I'm not gonna do a demo of cold reading. I've had enough. It's enough. How stupid is the public? They talk to dead people. They're dead. They're fucking dead. What's the matter with you? If I could talk to a dead person, I'd be the most dangerous person on the planet. I would not be walking around on a stage in, a, in an arena or on television. I'd be in some little tiny room with the CIA with wires in my brain. <laughs> Think about it. If I could get in touch with Albert Einstein, I'd say, hey Albert, how can I neutralize all the nuclear weapons on the planet all at once tomorrow morning? That would be history changing. Am I right? That would be a practical use of talking to dead people. What is the matter with you? How stupid are we? And it comes back to this idea, people want someone to talk to. They, I've done enough psychic readings in my day in order to write my book. But my book, Psychic Blues, it's called Psychic Blues because that's the blues part of it. Okay? The blues are the fact that I've seen enough people. I used to be a bartender, I was a magician, and then I decided with my magic skills I would infiltrate the psychic part. I saw this, I said, I'm going to scan the scanners. I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to climb as, to the top of the mountain, as high as I can get, and use all my mentalism skills to convince those assholes that I can do this and see how far I can get. And I got very far. But the problem was I got to the top, top of the mountain, and uh, it was so ugly. It's like Harlan Ellison has the story that he tells about Hollywood. It's like climbing to the top of a dung heap, and at the top is a rose, and you want to get to that rose. So you climb to the top of the mountain, but by the time you get to the top, you can't smell anymore. <laughs> so I was fascinated with psychics, and the whole market, and the, the way they market and approach, and believe me, my book is filled full of some of the most nefarious secrets that I had to sign a confidential, confidentiality secret when I worked for a 900 line. You could not reveal any of their ploys. 10 years, I had to wait. Now I'm still in the beans. And it's way too late because that one there is over. Now it's coming to your internet. It's coming to the internet. If you use a credit card to get a psychic reading, you are toast. Because now, and I can say this, skepticblog.org, you can read about it. I was approached, I'm not going to name the name of the financial institution, but it's huge in the United States. They said they want to develop, some of their clients are interested in developing a new platform that's going to involve on-screen psychic readings. 
Skype, you can, you can talk to the side view. They're going to see you, you're going to see them. But the side view on the other half of the screen gets instant information from your credit card. And believe me, with the technology and the money that's behind this, and I'm talking major, major money in the United States. It's not just Walmart. This is a major financial consortium. I'm not going to say who it is because I might get in a lot of trouble. And a lot of people, when I told them this story, you were hoaxed. I wasn't hoaxed because I listened very carefully to the people who I talked to. So their plan is to start this whole new platform where you call in for a reading, you're done. I could tell you the name of your second grade teacher. I could tell you the first car you want. I could tell you, uh, oh, you had a pretty big meal over at uh, such and such a restaurant about a week ago. It's all there. And all it takes is a storyteller, because basically what the psychic is, he's a freaking performer. He is a storyteller. That's what it's about. It's, it has nothing to do, there is no spiritual aspect. In my book, Psychic Blues, there is no spiritual or, or uh, metaphysical aspect whatsoever. It is a business. It is a multi-million dollar business, okay? It would have been easy for me to say, you know what? I'm making some pretty good money here. I don't need to do card tricks anymore. Forget this. I'm going to go for it. But I have a conscience. And I have to wake up every morning and look in the mirror. And I realize these people who are out there taking your money, well, hopefully not yours, they're sociopaths of the lowest order. They do not care, okay? They don't care anything about your real problems. They know what your real problems are. Just like a gypsy woman who's 80 years old, all she's done her whole life, whole life is give greetings. You think she knows shit about people? It's human nature. So if you're a young kid, you're 20 years old, you go to the gypsy lady, wow, how would you know all that stuff about me? She's a wise old gypsy woman. It's called life knowledge. Okay, so start walking the walk and stop talking about it, okay? Suit your actions and words. Um, okay, I fully realize that my attitude is not for everyone. <laughs> um, where was I going here? Yeah, talking to dead people. Uh, I just cannot believe it. Every time I see this on television and go to these shows, and I've been to a few, I just, it just, I just, I feel like I'm in the twilight. And I'm like, this is not, I just, what's wrong here? What's wrong with this picture? Where's common sense coming? Okay, so I'm not interested in the why anymore. I don't care about psychologists talking about why people need this or why they do not need it. I really don't care. And I don't care what people think about my infiltration. Boy, that, he didn't do a disclaimer all those years. Hell no! You can't infiltrate these kind of groups if you do a disclaimer. They don't want to hear that. You've got to get their confidence. They have this wink, wink, nod, nod thing. You know, they're like, oh, so you do auras? Of course. You know? You have to, if you want to fight fire with fire, you've got to lie like a liar. These are performance artists. They lie. A magician lies for a living, too. But now it's gone to a whole new level. Okay? It's, it's just... So here's the good news before I run this video. The good news is we are, as guerrilla skeptics, making a difference. I know we are making a difference. I see it. Okay? When we did the Sylvia Brown protest in Las Vegas, we were on the street in front of a casino. Now, you can go on the street, you can't go on the property. That's legal. You're, you can protest. So what we did is we had fact sheets on cold reading. We had fact sheets on all the mistakes. Sylvia Brown was never correct. I mean, what, again, what is wrong with people? She should have been a comedian. She's never correct. Nothing. She never got anything right. She told, she told people whose children were missing that they were dead when they turned out to be alive, and told people that their children were alive when they turned out to be dead. I mean, read about her on Wikipedia. Her Wikipedia page, boy. It's the truth, and it's very negative, okay? So what we found out when we would talk to people going by on the street, I mean, when you're in the skeptic community, you have a very dark viewpoint of this whole thing. You think we're lost, okay? The good news is 
We're insulated because we hear about all this crap all the time. But the average person who we saw on the street, and you still got a lot of work to do, don't get me wrong. But the average person on the street, <clears throat> we would say, Sylvia Brown's inside, convicted felon. You know about her? And a lot of the people, maybe 60%, would say, oh, she's full of crap. Oh, yeah, I've heard about her. She's nobody. Oh, what a bitch. Oh, you know, so, yeah. The, you see the, the demographics walking by right in front of you, which is very encouraging. You get out on the street, you find <coughs> it out. You sit at home and belong it. You don't see the reality. So, yeah, there's people going into her show, but the rest of the world is going by, all right? So the good news is, don't feel too bad. We still have work to do, but there's a lot of people who uh, who are who are have a brain. <laughs> it's, it's hard to believe sometimes. People you see on the TV shows, I'm worried about, but uh, not so much. You know, a person who has a real job and you're taking care of business. <coughs> they're, 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 they're a thought, thoughtful person. So I've been thrown out of. Uh, I just want to mention one more thing in the line of work that I do. Uh, you know, I've been thrown out. I've thrown out of the Biltmore Hotel. Chip Coffee. He's not too, you don't know about Chip over here, do you? Okay, here's a guy. Here's a guy who's one of these up and coming mediums. His thing is he has a TV show in the United States. He had a TV show where he would take children from the ages of, say, seven to 14 years old. These are children who were already disturbed. They were having nightmares. They were seeing, seeing things. And the show is about him encouraging them going, oh, those aren't demons. Those are your spirit guides. I'll show you how to get in touch with them. And then everything will be OK. Child abuse, folks. To me, that is child abuse. That is. Basic criminality of the worst kind. The worst kind. I mean, those kids who are on that show, they're going to grow up, and some of them are going to be your next crop of mediums. Some of them are going to be incredibly screwed up mentally and ill. Okay. But anyway, so I did chip copy. Got thrown out of the Biltmore Hotel. He has his own security force, and they look for people like me. And they have my picture now, so I'm pretty much done with chip. It was a strange feeling, you know, to be taken to the door and, you know, given the bum's rush. Boom. The guy says to me, don't come back. So I'm outside the hotel. I have this moment of epiphany, you know. I'm like, I feel pretty bad, you know. For a minute, I felt kind of like a bum. But then I said, no, you did the right thing. Because guess what? This was Chip Coffee's book tour, his national opening, opening night of his international book tour. So now you would think a book tour, a guy's coming into the room with his manager and his agent and his, his editors, I would be toasting champagne and I would be have a smile on my face, I would be so happy. But guess what? We had infiltrated that using some of the techniques I'm going to talk about. When he came into that room, when he came down the hallway, he looked terrified. He was like this. He did not know who his friends were, who was there, what to expect, because he knew in the audience and in the hotel and in the lobby, there were skeptics around, okay? And they had ejected one of them who was right in their face. I, I'm going to say this, and then we're going to run the video. You're not going to change the mind of any of the people who have bought a ticket. You're just going to look like a jerk if you stand up in one of these shows. The best thing you can do in one of these shows is laugh. Okay? When they, if you go to a show, don't say, you're a phony. What you do is, when you hear something amiss, laugh. Go, ha, 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 ha. They hate that. <laughs> that. That gets under their skin big time. You know, when they try and do a turnaround, where they say they try and be right when they're wrong, laugh. If you're an actor, laugh and laugh loudly. They can't throw you out for that. So anyway, so I was escorted out. I felt bad for a minute. Get over it. It's fun. It, get in a grassroots group. This is fun to do. It bonds with other people. You get you get in a group. You assign specific duties, which I'll talk about. 
and you go out and you organize, and it's incredibly satisfying because you're doing something. Okay, so are we ready to run this little round video? Yeah. Okay, take a look at this. And we 
We are planning, well, we, some of us from the IIG are involved with the Independent Investigation Group, which is from CFI. That's where the banner came from, okay? We have this banner, and we made an agreement wherever Sylvia Brown is, the banner gets mailed to anybody who wants to take, take it on and take it with them. And she is a convict, she was a convicted felon, that is absolutely true, okay? So we raised it high. Uh, so we had the banner with us because we knew she was going to be there. And we got a group of, I don't know, 12, 15 people who wanted to go with us. So it took about four hours to get the people. Granted, they were already at camp, they were already hyped up about it. But we got, them, we got in our cars, we got in taxis, we met, and we did it. So I'm going to talk just a little bit about some of the methods so that the next time Sally, did I say that word? Uh, the next time that woman is in town, or that person, and they're in a local area, and you have a grassroots group, here are some ways to uh, to uh, to get this done. Okay, I want to I want to stress how much time have I got left. Is that how much I have left, or how much is gone? Oh, that's how much I have left. Okay, I'm looking at the time. I am not suggesting that you go out and break any laws, okay? That would be wrong. Unless you want to go to jail, then go for it, okay? <laughs> now seriously, because I, I don't want to be tagged with that. I, I, I've got enough problems. <laughs> but I, I, my idea is take it as far as you can. Know your limits. Talk to a lawyer. We have a lawyer with CFI and IIG. Take it as far as you can to the edge. You saw those goons on the street watching us. You know, the cops, they were very nervous. The manager, Sylvia's manager, they were all out there. But the thing is, we're on the public street. You have a right. I don't know how it is here. Check it out. Find out. You can be on the street. If you're on public property like the Biltmore Hotel, you can be thrown out. So, those are some of the ground rules. I'm not suggesting breaking the law. I'm suggesting Fighting fire with fire, okay? And we get these, we get these, uh, remember the don't be a dick thing that went around for a while? Are you aware of that? It was like, don't be a dick, you know, be nice. That's the way to get things done. Well, maybe with your, rel with your relatives and your children or whatnot, but these people are professional con artists. They don't deserve your, your niceness. I think that's wrong. I think to think, somebody like Sylvia Brown or any of these Greek vampires, that we should somehow try to understand them or be nice to them. Uh, I draw the line there. It's cold. Don't, they don't care. They are laughing at the people who say, don't be a dick. They are laughing. They're going, boy, I am so glad that that don't be a dick thing is out there because they're going to leave us alone. And they just continue to, to grow and a new one comes up every day. We want to make it difficult. We want to let the psychic know that we're out there. Forget the obvious, okay? Barnum said there's a, there's a sucker born every minute. It's totally true, okay? So, how do we do this, okay? What you do is you get the grassroots group together and you make assignments to certain people, okay? Don't, if you can do this on your own, fine. But if you do it on your own, you're not going to be noticed. You need to have at least two or three people who are willing to join you in this little enterprise. Think stealth. Think that you are James Bond. You are Patrick McGowan in The Prisoner. You are, you are Danger Man. You are incognito. Okay? So you, you, what you do is you find an event and then you stage it. You plan it out just like one of those movies where they, they unwrap the, uh, the map of the bank. You know? First you go and you observe the facility if you can, okay? You find out where the sidewalks are, where the exits are, where the, the uh, lobby is, okay? Whether you can get inside, how much tickets are. And believe me, nothing's worse than paying money for, to go into one of these shows. But if you're in a group, you each chip in a couple bucks. It's not so painful. Okay? Because you need at least one person on the inside. Okay? So, you know, say you have four people. One person is going into the show. One person shows up early. Okay?
Okay, so say the show is at 8 o'clock. One person shows up from 5 to 7 on the screen to observe. Uh, third person. So that person is there from, say, 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock. At 6 o'clock, they go home. And the next person, person number 3, shows up at 5.30 or 5, overlaps. That's his shift, okay? So you do, you stagger these people. Because what they do with their guards and their management, if they see two people talking to each other who, who are not in their group, or they don't seem to be with the, uh, you know, they don't have angel groups or whatever, you know, they will, they will immediately spot you and then you're done. So you have to kind of tag team it. One person comes in, give the nod, you don't even talk to each other. Next person goes to work. Person number three goes into the restrooms. Those little pieces of paper we have, that we, the, the green sheets, those were all the really egregious things that Sylvia Brown was horribly wrong about. No explanation, just a list of names. Murdered children, missing children. We had hundreds of those, 500 of them. We put them everywhere. No explanation, just that. Then we also had cold reading sheets. So somebody goes in, goes into all the stalls in the restrooms, leaves dozens of them everywhere. Goes to the bar, leaves packets of them. People, you get people to go in. Do you know about Sylvia Brown? Oh yeah, would you mind taking a bunch of these with you? Because they're bright green, okay? We want their people to see these bright green sheets of paper. A hundred here, a hundred there, makes them very nervous, okay? So, person number three is in charge of that. They do their job, they leave. Person number three leaves at seven. Seven o'clock, person number four shows up. See where I'm going with this? It's a teamwork thing that you plan out. But now we didn't actually do that for this, this protest. So it's nice if you have a couple days or a week to set it up. And it's fun. It is fun because when you're successful, when, when we did ship copy, we had a couple of weeks to do it. There were some mistakes we made, uh, which I won't go into. But, but this is how you learn, OK? You bond with the other people. You, you find who's really good at this. Uh, and then one person goes inside, and if you can, that person has a, a camera or a hidden video, a button cam in their purse, tapes the show, take the show afterwards, make a transcript of it. It's amazing, okay? Because we just did one transcript where, uh, I can't mention any names, but a specific psychic, we took it apart. She asked over 400 questions in the space of like 10 minutes. <laughs> They're supposed to know. <laughs> Make this to me in my book, I mentioned it's like a psychic is supposed to know, okay? But what it comes down to, if you're an effective mentalist or an effective psychic, it's not what you know, it's what people think you know. It's a mentalist, it's not what you do, it's what people think you can do. Okay, so watch any of these people. Why are they asking any questions? I don't get it. Is there an M in your name? Well, fuck you. You're supposed to know. I mean, you can say that, but I mean, it's like common sense again. Okay, so so you have to be prepared to understand not only how this person is working, but take notes later. Okay, because we found that there are there are. I mean, I know, because there's only a certain amount of love and money, okay? What else we got going? You know, maybe if you're really stupid, you'll take a health or medical question. But it didn't seem to bother Sylvia, okay? Sylvia didn't care, you know? Am I going to get over my lung cancer? Yeah, you'll be fine. Move it on next. <laughs> and she does it like a sausage factory. It's amazing. She sits on this throne with these fingernails, like Ming the Merciless. The <laughs> people get in the line and they come by and allow one question. Well, my boyfriend be shooting me. No, I'm sorry, honey. Next. <laughs> and I think one of the reasons why some of these horrible people are so popular is they're they're so ugly and they're so like nasty that people go, oh, she's got to be real. <laughs> now she's really nice, and she that would be realistic. She's very realistic. One, the show I did, there's another video where I talked to Sylvia 
at the Universal Amphitheater. I wish we had time to show that because that's one of my favorites. But, you know, but the, she says to this woman, <coughs> the woman asks, is my boyfriend true to me? She says, no, I'm sorry. He's sitting right next to her. Oh, my fiance. Is my fiance true to me? No, I'm sorry. He's no good for you. He's sitting right next to her. <coughs> anyway, sorry to lose my voice. So, should I take questions, or do you get the idea that it's time to stop asking questions and use your, you know, common sense and get out and do something? You can't go wrong. It makes you feel good. You'll find other people. And, you know, we found, we found some different paranormal conventions with the IIG, and we have found this is part of the problem, and I'm sure you're aware of it. It's not drinking, but that can be more of a No, um, We are in an era. I mean, I, I grew up with the outer limits, Twilight Zone, One Step Beyond, all these great supernatural stories. I love a good ghost story. But that was clearly a drama. That was clearly fiction. It was a drama that were actors. Now they have reality TV and Buffy and I mean, all this paranormal program, it's got to the point where there's a generation, if you're not already aware of it, there's a generation of youth, bless them, that don't know any better. They really don't know. They don't know what skeptical, rational, critical thinking is. They have no idea. They just assume that ghosts are real. You know, we, we went to this convention, people were coming up to us. You know, the ghost, that's called paranoia. What? Oh, really? Oh, all my friends told me that was just normal. That's just a, you see faces, they're, they're demons, you know? And they're just very innocent because they don't know. So we got a lot of work to do to tip the scale, but it starts with a room full of people like us, okay? And we have to do this. If you die on the street doing this, you'll have done some good, okay? <laughs> I mean, this to me is like, this, what, the room that we have here, this is the new spirituality, okay? We're searching for the truth. You know, we don't want to deride the poor innocent kids that think that they're a vampire and they want to get fake fangs and all that. We don't deride them, we try and understand them, okay? But the people who take advantage of it, like the producers of these shows, they got to go. They need to understand that there's an alternative way of looking at all this. So, now I'm going to take some questions. I'm done ranting. I think I've made my point. If I haven't, please talk to me and uh, remember that you're not alone. Okay? So, any questions?
Thank mm-hmm. you. 